From my home to yours, all the very best to you. I hope you're having a good day. If you're not having a good day, I hope something is said over the next few minutes that lifts your spirits. Also, I hope that that you'll let us pray, especially let us pray for the young people in your world. I'm concerned, as many of you are, at the anxiety level that youngsters carry these days. Consequently, we took a book I wrote called Anxious for Nothing and released it in a young reader's version, speaking specifically to young people. My daughter Andrea helped me do this. I want to encourage us to help people follow Paul's instruction for feeling anxiety with our C-A-L-M acronym. First, we celebrate God in His goodness. A, we ask God for help. L, we look on the bright side. And then M, we meditate on good things. Today, we're going to take a closer look at A, ask God for help. The Apostle Paul says in Philippians 4, 6, do not worry about anything but pray and ask God for everything you need, always giving thanks. According to the Apostle Paul, prayer is where we do battle with anxiety. It is God's way for us to deal with our worries. It's choosing to take our worries to God before our worries take their toll over on ourselves. You see, peace happens when people pray. And yes, young people, peace will happen when you pray. The Apostle Paul wants us to pray about everything. He says, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. <laughs> everything? Come on, everything? Does God really want us to pray about everything? Everything, even a scraped knee, even an argument with a friend, even a game that we have coming up. Does God really care about all that stuff? The answer is yes. God wants to hear about your tiniest wishes, your smallest concerns. If it matters to you, it matters to him. In the Gospel of John, Jesus' mother, Mary, asked her son to deal with what we might think is a pretty small problem compared to the other miracles that he performed, empty wine containers. Now folks in first century Israel really knew how to throw a party. A wedding didn't just last for one evening or even one day. Weddings could last as long as seven days and food and wine were expected to last just as long. So Mary was worried when she saw that the party had run out of wine. Now, we don't know why they ran out of wine, but we know how they got some more wine. According to John chapter 2, Mary presented the problem to Jesus, and she had confidence that he could solve it. Now, if you ever want to pray about something but think God won't care, just think about this story. It was such a small problem, again, by comparison, but Jesus responded. He fixed it, and he didn't just fill up a couple of wine bottles. The scripture says there were six stone jars that held 20 or 30 gallons of water each. That's up to 180 gallons of wine. Now, why did Jesus agree to Mary's request for more wine? No one was dying. It wasn't an emergency. He did it because Mary cared about it. And friend, Jesus cares about your problems too because he cares about you. No matter how big, no matter how small, if you care about them, he cares about them because he cares about you. And he can answer your requests in a big way. So follow Paul's advice, please. Follow Paul's advice. Pray about everything. Take a page from Mary's playbook and get specific. Offer specific prayers. This is what we need, Lord. You see, when we pray specifically, we show God that we're serious about our prayers. If you tell a friend, hey, can I come to your house sometime? Well, that's a, that's a vague request. And that friend might or might not think that you're serious about coming over. But if you ask your friend, hey, is there any way that I can come over on Friday afternoon at 2 o'clock? then your friend will know you're really wanting to come by. It's the same when we pray. When we tell God exactly what we're concerned about and exactly what we need, then He knows we mean it. Also, when we pray specific requests, we're able to see how God works. When Mary asked Jesus for more wine, she knew her request had been answered when there were 
180 gallons, more gallons of wine. You know, when you pray for something specific, it's easier to see how God answers your prayer. Another reason to offer specific prayer. We lighten our load when we do so. Many of our anxieties are threatening because they're ill-defined and they're vague. But if we can distill the challenge into a specific phrase, a specific sentence, we really bring it down to size. You know, it's one thing to say, Lord, please bless my day at school tomorrow. It is something else entirely to pray, Lord, i got to stand up in front of the class. I've got to present my science project. And this happens at 2 p.m. Speaking in front of the class scares me. Would you please go ahead of me? Would you grant me a spirit of peace and courage? Would you bless this effort so that I can speak calmly and confidently? There. Look at that. You've reduced the problem into a prayer-sized challenge. Now, today, if you or your parents or your child feel overcome with worry, just remember, ask God for help. Be specific about the help you need and just watch God work in powerful ways. Okay? You think about that.